So in step six, let's go over the pool all and duplicate functionalities uh, presented in our design plugins. Um, we can start with pool all. So if we select a specific key, we can see that the options adjust for that key in the plugin. Uh, namely, you can see if it has been linked properly, there's a character limit. And let's have a scenario where a copywriter decides to update the values for the sign up uh, button that we have, and they change it to, for example, sign up now. We'll save this here. So now we could uh, pull this value and update our design accordingly was localized being the source of truth. Press of a button, your wording is updated. You could do this pull functionality for all and just make sure you update everything. I uh, just wanted to demonstrate how uh, the plugin uh, changes if you target your actions for a specific key. And let's say in this scenario, I realize that sign up now is just too long. It doesn't fit here. I want to inform my localized stakeholders, be it copywriters or translators, that there is actually a character limit, and it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't uh, surpass ten characters in this stage. So I'll just update the character limit box here, push these values. I can keep the options just the same, um, and press proceed. Very single as well. You get a results page right here, and so one screenshot was updated because actually the value here, sign up now, has changed. So in localized, the screenshot should also reflect to the latest version. And we have the key character limit that was updated for that sign up key. Let's view this in localize. I'll refresh the page. And if I open up the sign up now uh, English value, you see that I have a new value right here informing me as a localized stakeholder that there's a 10 character limit on this key and I should not surpass it. Actually, if I try to save it now, it won't even allow me. The value is too long. So then I will need to revert back to a shorter version that uh, that respects the 10 character limit, press save. And once again, I can simply this time press pull for everything and it will only update then that one key because that's the only thing that has changed so far. Um, so that's a nice way how you can communicate with your uh, localized stakeholders, be it project manager, translators, copywriters, uh, and inform them of any changes. If, for example, I would change the sign up now value here um, to sign up here and push this selected value. So my design is my source of truth. And I have this updated from Figma custom translation status. We'll press proceed from here. So we see that one translation has been updated and one screenshot updated as well, since this screenshot or this frame has changed the screenshot should update and localize as well. And once again, I'll refresh. So now we see that um, the color here for the custom translation status has changed. It is different from all the other ones. So the purple one was the one I created for created from Figma and the blue one has updated correctly to updated from Figma. So if there's already been a translation cycle, somebody will know that, hey, the base language here has changed. Where has it changed from? Well, from Figma, from my design, and also my verified and unverified statuses have triggered for the uh, target languages, uh, saying that, hey, the base language, the source has changed. Maybe we need to revisit the translations here as well. So that's just a great method to communicate and collaborate, to collaborate with all the stakeholders involved in the product development and the localization cycle. Um, and now we're ready to discuss the duplicate functionality. So imagine the scenario where the, from the design, we are creating key names thanks to the key naming generator. And our developers are losing a bit of context at this stage. And I want to offer them uh, a visual context on where the key identifiers are represented throughout the product, throughout the, the user journey and the wireframing. Uh, well, Localize has developed this duplicate uh, functionality where you simply select create with key names, give this copy page or this duplicate page a name. So key name page, for example, for developers. 
and press proceed. So now if you navigate at the uh, top left, you'll see that you have the options for pages and you actually have then two pages right here. So localized mobile, that's my original copy. This is where I should continue working in. And then I have the key name uh, page for developers where they can be invited as uh, viewer Figma users and they can then benefit from the visual context of where those key identifiers are reflected. Uh, and more than that, they can actually in Figma use the chat functionality, uh, share their no technical knowledge on how they think the product should be developed based on what they see. Uh, and th this just really allows for a collaborative uh, process between developers, designers, um, product managers as well. So that's uh, how you can offer this. And basically you, you really gain in, in, in timing and time to market because the moment you've pushed the base language value and the key, key identifiers, you can have separate cycles at the same time for the translation, the copywriting, the reviewal, and in parallel, then the developers can already start their process um, in the product development um, workflow. Let's imagine also that then at the end of the workflow, so we have our translations are in and we need to update our mobile app, uh, mobile apps uh, screenshots in the app store for, for example, Germany in this, use, in this case, click of a button, just press a duplicate, select create with language, select your target language, for example, German, give it a name again, uh, German page, press proceed, here you go, press of a button, you have a non-editable uh, copy that you can share with marketing, with local subject matter experts so that they have in context um, translations and they can, you know, uh, you can work on this feedback loop where they give you information, maybe the tone of voice is not correct, maybe uh, something should change about the translation. Um, so you can close this localization uh, workflow right there with a feedback loop from the subject matter experts and you have your screenshots to update your uh, local app stores for your German customers in this case, for example. 